Here at KashantanTV.com, we're going to be featuring a series on how to land that interview, but also how to land that job. With today's economy, not a lot of jobs are available, so you need to, you need to be on your best to know what to wear, not what to wear, but also too, how to make your resume look its best. And that's where we're going to start this series is off resume writing. And I have here with me Jed McCoy with JFS, and he is with Coshanton County One Stop, which is part of Job and Family Services Opportunity Links. And Jed, what's the main thing you need to know before you start writing a resume? Skill. You need to have uh, your skills defined in, in the industry or job that you're applying for. Uh, without that, you're going to kind of sit and spin your wheels because you have to tailor your resume specifically to the job or industry you're after. All right. Are there different types of resumes? There are. There's four main types. There's what they're, what's called chronological, there's a functional, there's a combination resume, and then there's transferable skills. The most common one to write is chronological because it's all time-based. It's easier for people to do. Now, one of the things that I have problems in writing when you do resumes is that that first sentence you have to write to sell yourself and um, do you have any points of advice for that? That's the objective statement. Uh, some people call that a career summary. Uh, actually if, if you don't have a nice catchy phrase you do not want to use that anymore. It's actually getting old. Um, if you have a nice uh, job that you're writing for and something catchy that it shows your experiences and your skills then you want to use it. Uh, for example, uh, you know, experienced manufacturing worker with tow motor, uh, experience, stand up, sit down, anything specific to that job. If it's not specific, it's a vague statement, don't even write one. Okay. Let's go ahead and get into the nuts and bolts of writing a resume. Where do we start? We start with our skills, but now what? Now you got to have a heading. The heading is just basically your name, address, phone number, cell phone numbers, email address. If you have a Twitter account or Facebook account, that's always recommended as well. Um, what you want to do is make sure your contact information is up to date. That's the first part. And then you got to decide what is it you want the company to see, whether it be your work history, your skill set, those are your titles within your resume. Once you do that, then your skills fill in the rest. Um, but the biggest pointer I can say is visual layout. Format and visual layout is key to a good resume. Now with the resume, is there a preference whether it needs to be in the corner, your contact information, or in the middle? How, what's the best way to do that? Personal choice. Personal there is no choice. set way. Um, you know, it, it boils down, you've got to have your personality show on your resume. That's, that's critical. Um, some people like their names separate from their addresses, and other people like everything aligned perfectly. So, your choice. That's, that's the nice thing. Speaking of giving, giving it its own personality, colored paper, white paper, creamed stay, paper. Stay traditional. Um, I don't recommend the highly colored paper, the bright greens and pinks and blues and all that. Stay what I call uh, traditional, your light browns, beiges ivories, white can work, and also stay away from borders and pictures because your computer might not be able to read it. And don't spray with perfume either. Yeah, don't spray with perfume. <laughs> okay. Also, what's next with the nuts and bolts of running a resume? Really just make sure the format is okay. Um, you want to stay, the font is very important. Don't go any smaller than 11. Don't go any larger than a 12. Um, they, they like a one inch border. You can play with that a little bit if you need it. Uh, one to two pages, no more than two pages of content because they don't want to read a book. They want to have a summary. That's what this is about. A resume is a summary of your qualifications. So um, again, standard paper is very critical. Font size. Use something that is interpreted very easily. Times New Roman, Courier New. Um, there's like four main ones that you can use. Those are the two most common ones though. Okay. What other tips do you have for writing a resume? Just make sure it visually looks good. I mean, that's part of it. If it's jumbled up and stuff does, isn't easy to read, employers are not going to read it. And also make sure you have one electronically. That's what, uh, we're in the computer. We're in technology age right now. If it's printed and it looks nice, is one thing. It has to look good on a computer too. So PDF file and Word documents are critical. Should the headings be put in bold with the headings? If you have work history and um, skills, those types of headings, do they need to be in bold or just regular? You, you, if you bold them and underline them, they will stand out. So if you, you can do one or the other, you can do both. I recommend making your name a little bit bigger than the rest and bolding it 
and then the subtitles or the titles you have, that is again a personal choice. I bold the ones when I do those, I bold them and underline them so they really stand out. Is it true that employers really skim? You have about five to ten seconds to really grab the potential employer's attention. What are, comes, what are some of the other things you can do to grab their attention so they really do read in detail your resume? You're right, you got five to ten seconds to catch the attention of an employer. So that's why visual appearance, first off, that's key. If it looks bad, they're going to get rid of it. Um, anything that's catchy, make it pop, bullet points to show skill levels. Um, being concise and to the point, not a long drawn out paragraph. They're not going to want to see that. Short and sweet, to the point. Quantify your accomplishments. You did what? You, you saved how much in scrap? You reduced production by how much? What did you do? Uh, that's what they're after. They want to see that kind of stuff. So we got our resume. What do we do with it? Once you do your resume, you can print it obviously and send it out by mail. Um, and You want to match the paper and the envelopes together. And then you've got to have it electronically. That's your Word and PDF format. I highly encourage emailing it to yourself so you can get it from any computer. Uh, or get a flash drive, put it on there. And then you can hand it out to your references. You can hand it out to colleagues, people you know who see your job history and can help you get a job. Sometimes it boils down to who you know. Now when submitting a resume, you put it in the envelope. Mm -hmm. Back in my day, which it wasn't even that long ago, but there was a certain format that you used when you sent a resume and um, it was in between two plastics and it had the hard bind right here. How do you send them out now? Do you just put it in the manila envelope or do you have a cover letter? Do you have, what do you do? If I'm sending one, A, read the descriptions. What do they want? Do they want a resume and cover letter? If they say they want a resume and cover letter, send it. Follow directions. Um, if it says resume only, just do a resume. The plastic things, they look good, but as soon as the employer gets them, they're trash. So don't waste your time and money on that. Um, if you fold them, there's a special way to fold them, or if you choose not to. A lot of people like the big paper size manila envelopes. So again, there is a personal choice. There's no set format or way to do it. It boils down to your choice. Okay. If I want to write a cover letter, what are some of the tips for writing a cover letter if one is required? Make sure it's specific. Personalize it. Um, I always say, think of the mail you get at home. Do you open a letter to whom it may concern? You know, I jokingly say I'm not concerned, so I throw it away. <laughs> so I don't do that. Uh, but what I do is, is, with today's technology, you should be able to find a name. If you can't find a name, that's where your one stop could help you. Do we, you know, can we tell you who to write it to? Or just read the description. A lot of times they'll tell you. If you can't locate a name, get a position, hiring manager, human resources. Again, that's still somewhat personal. So the biggest thing to a cover letter is make it personal. The second part of that's brief. If your cover letter is any longer than three quarters of the first page, it's too long. Um, introduce yourself with the first paragraph. The second paragraph is all skills and abilities related. And then the third paragraph is thank them and tell them you want the job. Tell them you want to meet. That's the goal of the cover letter. Uh, it's probably one of the most underutilized tools that you can have. The, also, the other thing with the cover letter is uh, you got to include your name. A lot of people just don't do that. And then include the person you're writing it to. So it, that helps as well. So we have a resume and we have our cover letter and we send it out in the mail. Do we make a phone call? Do we email them for a follow-up? How do we follow up? If you can call them, or actually even better yet, if you can show up in person, that's best. Um, but if you've done everything by email, you can follow up by email. I highly encourage a phone call just checking, you know, three to five days afterwards. Longest would be a week. And just touch base. You know, I submitted my resume for consideration for this position. Have you made a decision? Again, you're getting your name out there into their brain again. It makes them think about it. Um, not that it's respect deal, just following up. If they tell you, hey, sorry we've made a decision, thank them for their time. At least they talk to you. Now is there a way or how many times is way too many times to be contacting a potential employer where it might be stockish? <laughs> that, well, that's, that's the problem right now. There's a fine line between um, you know, follow-up and, and harassment, believe it or not. Follow up about you know within a week, and then maybe every couple weeks thereafter. And and after the first about three follow-ups, I wouldn't continue to do it because it's going to be harassment. Um, if you can physically show up though, there's places that like you to sign a book. They like that. But nowadays everything's done online anyway, so it's hard to do. 
Jed, anything else that you would like to add about resume writing, cover letters? This is part of our first series in trying to land that interview and how to dress and tips for interviewing will be coming up soon. Anything else you'd like to add though in resumes and cover letters? If somebody has questions, can they contact you? They sure can. Uh, one, of the, one of the services we offer here is the ability to help with cover letters. Um, if I can stress anything, try to write your own. Uh, you know, we help people write cover letters and we don't have a problem with that. Um, but again, it's the most, the best well-written ones are the ones you do yourself. Um, do research. We've got a lot of websites you can do. Um, make sure you write your skills down. Break everything out. Don't worry about what it looks like first of all. Those are your references. And then put it together. Proofread it. That's huge. Do not make a mistake. Misspellings will hurt you big time. Contact information is the other. Uh, companies don't like to call and say your phone's been disconnected or so-and-so's uh, mailbox has not been set up. So if you're going to list it, make sure it's up, up and running. Um, have good stationery as paper. Uh, there's different styles of paper. We talked about that a little bit. And make sure it's visually appealing. Other than that, you know, we are here to help. If someone needs it, they can come into the local one stop and we'll do what we can to help. What is your contact information and address? The one stop's located at 725 Pine Street in the lower level. Uh, my phone number directly is 295-7519. Uh, and the nice thing is we have computers here too. So if you don't have the latest computer software, come on in. We have those and we can provide that for you as well. Thank you so much, Jed. And what will the next series be about? We'll be providing tips on a little bit about research and company, but the biggest part of it will be job application tips. All right. Well, thank you so much. And you have been watching KashawtonTV.com.